Thank you, Hitan, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, yes, just to confirm, I am Ed Humpherson from the UK Statistics Authority, and I am responsible for the part of the authority that regulates official statistics. And I'll say a little bit more about that as um, I go through my presentation. My main message today is that I want to talk about uh, a report that we're publishing this Friday on official statistics on income and earnings. And I'd like to uh, stimulate your appetite to read that report on Friday by giving you a few morsels uh, from it. A few, a pair, consider this an aperitif, I suppose. Um, the main message of this talk and also of that report is that uh, you could look at the system of official statistics on income and earnings and uh, pick lots of holes in it and um, highlight all the gaps and the weaknesses and the problems. And I don't think that that would be a particularly valuable way of looking at this issue. That's not to say that we won't in our report highlight lots of areas which are ripe for improvement. Uh, opportunities to make the statistics better. We certainly do do that, and there, there are plenty. But the spirit that we have in the report, and that I want to have infusing my, my comments this afternoon, is that we want to point to significant opportunities for improvement in the official statistics, so that those official statistics shine a light on the questions that are of interest to users. Uh, the questions that inform policy, the questions that inform debate, and the questions that inform, in a sense, democratic accountability. And for those official statistics, in fact, to do all of those things in new and flexible ways. That's what we're trying to, to foster. But before I uh, get into that, let me just say a little bit about what we do at the authority for those of you who, who aren't familiar. So the core thing that we do is that we assess official statistics against the code of practice for official statistics. And if they comply with that code of practice, those official statistics are designated as national statistics, and they will carry prominently featured that, um, that badge, the national statistics badge. And that badge gives a signal to users that the official statistics comply with the code, that they meet user needs, that they can be trusted, their trustworthy source, the best available estimate. And in a sense, they add value by focusing on key aspects of, 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 of our society. The second thing that we do, and perhaps our highest profile thing, is that we make public interventions when we see evidence of misuse of official statistics in public debate. Now those two things are very powerful tools, but if that was all we did, we might not be adding as much value as we could. Because those two tools, assessing individual official statistics and making public interventions, both tend to be specific to individual statistical series. It might be about HBAI, or it might be about um, the children's dental health or, or police recorded crime. But official statistics, of course, don't simply represent a series of atomized individual releases. They also need to come together to create a coherent whole so that collectively they enable users, like all of you in the room, to answer the key questions that you want to answer. So for us to address whether statistics are achieving that goal, we have a third tool, which we call monitoring. We look at how the system as a whole is functioning. And it's as monitoring that we've done this piece of work on income and earnings. We're looking at the key question, which I've put up there, is this system of official statistics, all the range of things which are measuring income and earnings, is that system serving the public good by informing debate and supporting decisions? Uh, we launched it in April uh, 2014, and we set two criteria uh, for answering the question. The first was a criteria of coherence, which I've got there up on my slide, and the second one was a criteria of accessibility. In a sense, what we then did was we went out and asked all of you, and many other people as well. We set up a process of getting the views of users, because our ambition was to take the views of users and hold those views up as a mirror to the producers of official statistics and say, this is what the users value. These are the areas where the users uh, would like to see improvements. 
So I have to thank all of you in the room who's, who have contributed, and I, I can look through the list and recognise that many of you have uh, provided input to us. We'd have had a very empty report had it not been for your input, so thank you very much. So what I'd like to do is pick up a couple of things which are reflected in the mirror. This is going to be a very incomplete account of what's in the report. It's the uh, aperitif. Uh, please read the whole thing on, on, uh, on, on Friday when it comes out. Let's start with figure one. And please don't strain your eyes trying to interpret this uh, for several reasons. One is it's really illustrative as much as it is um, I informative. Uh, secondly, it's a, a movable feast. So this is our attempt to capture in one picture the full range of official statistics on income and earnings which are gathered by um, official statistics producers in the UK. And as you can see, there's a wide range of things. Uh, the reason it's a challenge is that um, every time we think we've got it right, somebody pops up and says, well, hang on, what about, what about this one? And um, we have to add another one in. It's, it's a bit like that scene in Blackadder where Blackadder's talking to Dr. Johnson about his dictionary. Blackadder starts making up words and Dr. Johnson looks panicked because they're not in his dictionary. It's a little bit like that. I had a conversation today with the people who do the indices of multiple deprivation. I was like, ah, it's not in there. But fortunately, the producers of uh, indices of multiple deprivation convinced me that it shouldn't, it shouldn't feature on this diagram. So, but I'm, I'm I'm pretty sure it'll, it'll change between now and Friday when, it, when it's fi finally published. Um, there's a serious point uh, about this. It's, uh, it's not simply that it illustrates Chris Gordon's uh, uh, nice observation that there are more definitions of poverty than people in poverty. Uh, there are more ways of measuring income and earnings than there are actually people earning income. I, don't think that, I think that would be exaggerating. The serious point is, 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 is perhaps twofold. Firstly, with such a wide range of um, statistics being uh, produced, um, it's quite possible for very, very valuable sources to be overlooked. In fact, until we embarked on this piece of work, I hadn't actually even been aware of EU silk, and it's actually a very interesting and useful source for looking at the questions that we've been discussing today. The second thing is, such a, a, uh, a rich system also has its natural problems of, of accessibility, because it can be quite hard to know exactly where these things are, and that's accessibility both at a macro level, can you find the Wealth and Assets Survey easily and compare it to what's in SPI, for example, or pension trends? And also at a micro level, getting access to the micro data. So one conclusion that I would like you to draw from the work that we're publishing on Friday is it's a complex landscape. The second thing that we say and uh, I think it's flowed through today, is it's a very challenging problem for official statisticians to measure income and earnings in a, a, a complex society like the United Kingdom. And um, we, as we've heard uh, already from, uh, from Joanna and Glenn, lots of creative thought goes into how to, to come at that problem. Our report picks out the numbers of, of ways that this is challenging. I'm just going to highlight one, but, but there are many others. And, and this really echoes something that uh, Matthew Whitaker said earlier. Matthew, you said that uh, there are different trends for different cohorts in poverty. That's also true of income. This is an extract from um, the ONS's annual survey of hours and earnings, uh, which uh, I call ASH. Uh, I notice some people call it ASH-E. I'm not quite sure which is the preferred uh, description. I'm going to call it ASH. ASH had this very nice graph. I think it was the second graph in the, uh, the statistical release. And what it shows is the divergence of experience between the average earnings of all employees, that's the dark blue line, it's in 2014, round about bubbling around at naught, and the uh, average earnings of those in continuous employment. Um, not only are they very, very widely different, about four percentage points different, but also, of course, one is north of the CPI line, which is the dotted line, and one is, one is south. Now, I picked this graph out not really to, to, to debate this specific issue, but to illustrate that this is a world in which the call uh, which you do hear a lot, the call for single indicators, for a single number, makes, a, makes it difficult for statisticians because single numbers mask incredibly wide-ranging compositional effects. And one of the things that we say in our report is that this is a very challenging problem in a, in a, in a fast-moving society where compositional effects are changing all the time. So let me move on 
to the third thing. And this is, this is uh, just to demonstrate that there's been absolutely no collusion between me and Glenn. Uh, there are lots of positive developments I'm going to, uh, to put up, or actually two of the things you've already mentioned, Glenn, and had I known you are going to mention them, I'd have, I'd have come up with some others. It's not that there are only two. Uh, there, are, there are many others, but the two that I've got are uh, um, economic well-being. Now, uh, is Jill Matheson still here? I can't, you know, just, well, Jill, Jill made a, a really um, strong plea for better storytelling in official statistics. And that's perhaps our main recommendation in our whole uh, report is that um, uh, thinking not simply of individual statistical releases, but thinking about the coherent picture that they tell is a really, really important task of, of official statistics. I think the economic well-being release that Glenn talked about, which came out on December the 23rd for the first time, is a really, really good start in an attempt to start to pull together from different sources a more coherent picture. That's not a coherent single measure, because of my earlier comments, but it's a coherent picture. So I thoroughly agree with Jill on that. Um, and Glenn also mentioned this nice guide to the sources of data on earnings and income, which um, is produced by uh, ONS with the support of DWP and HMRC, and it guides people as to what sources do what and where, what their strengths and limitations are, and it's, it's very useful. Both of those are starts, they're not endpoints, and uh, they provide a direction of travel for how to to, to provide coherence and direction of travel about how to provide um, greater accessibility. On the accessibility side, of course, uh, that's high-level accessibility, not the micro-issues of access to micro-data that, that Sharon Witherspoon was talking about um, very eloquently uh, earlier today. There's still work to do on the latter. So those are three messages which emerged from our report. Um, it's complicated, it's challenging, and there are lots of positive developments. Of course, that's not all we say, and please read the report on, on, on Friday. I just want to say a little bit, though, uh, about what's in our Chapter 5, which moves beyond some immediate observations and analysis to thinking about what a better future might look like. And we start by saying, if you had a blank piece of paper and you were asked to design a system for measuring the income and earnings of citizens in the UK, I'd be very, very surprised if you came up with the current system that we have, with multiple producers, pr producers producing different statistics on different bases at different times um, uh, uh, with different levels of accessibility. I don't think that's where you'd start. I'd be very surprised. On the other hand, it is where we are. And it's really clear from today that lots of the individual series that are produced have their fan bases. There was even a slide up here in this room which said, we love HBAI. I don't know those of you who were in the session that was in, but somebody put up a slide. I think it was um, uh, the chap from uh, Child Action Poverty Group had a, we love HBAI, which I'm hoping to see on a T-shirt or a mug <laughs> sometime soon. We love it. And I think, I think there probably is a, it's somewhere around the country right now somebody saying, we love SPI or, 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 or we love AWE. They're, 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 each of these uh, statistical releases have clear user needs. So I think to rip those up and start again would be to upset lots of value. So how do you move forward? Well, the thing to do, of course, is to build on what's already there. And to do that, we highlight four principles um, for building on what's already there, building on the framework that we've already got, serving the public good, involving users as a resource, utilizing new sources of, sources of data, and cultivating a spirit of curiosity. Can I just pick out three, the, the, the three of those? Involving users as a resource, that's today. That's um, regarding the people who use uh, official statistics as people who can input and help uh, develop and advise and support. That's a very important principle. Utilizing new sources of data. We heard from uh, the Trussell Trust. Um, I'm not sure whether the gentleman from the Trussell Trust is still here, but he gave a very, very powerful talk. And he talked about the data that the Trussell Trust have about um, poverty and, and people who are coming to, to use the Trussell Trust's services. And he said, well, that's really a rich resource that nobody's coming to, 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 to um, enrich official statistics. There are lots of new sources of data. I think utilizing them can be very powerful, particularly to supplement some of the slower releases which come through from the, uh, the official statistics place. Finally, cultivating a spirit of curiosity. What does that mean? Well, I think it's very um, clear that official statisticians are at their best when they step above 
just the churn, the grind of producing the next set of numbers and stand back and say, what does this all mean? What insights is this creating uh, for the people who, who, who are going to use the statistics? And we really encourage that as an important principle. So that's our report, uh, Coherence and Accessibility of Official Statistics on in Income and Earnings. It'll be on our website from Friday morning, available through all good search engines. And followed by further engagement, please, uh, please do watch this space. We want to have further discussions about this. And let me um, just close by reiterating the ambition I outlined at the beginning. Uh, we don't want this report to be an experience of just um, sort of uh, carping criticism of, of the existing system. We want it to be an engine of improvement and making sure that the official statistics that are produced on income and earnings meet society's needs and do so in as agile and flexible way as possible. Thank you very much. <laughs>